Hey friends, welcome back to another Seed Talk with Lisa and Lane. Hey Lane. Hi everyone. So glad you guys have dropped in and Lane and I have figured out that we both wore the appropriate shirt, totally unplanned to go along with the topic today, which is troubleshooting sunflowers. So there are a lot of really common questions that we hear over and over again about sunflower issues. So why does my single stem sunflower have blooms up and down the stems? Why are they blooming short? What happens if an animal comes along and eats off the top of the single stem sunflower seedling? Is it going to still bloom? So we're just going to cover some really common questions that we get. And hopefully that will give you all some ideas of how to troubleshoot those in your own garden. What a great idea. So friends, we're glad you've dropped in. If you want to learn more about the work that the Gardener's Workshop is doing, you can find out all kinds of wonderful good stuff over on our website that is home to our online garden shop full of the same tools, seeds, and supplies you hear us mention here, as well as a complete library of online courses. There's just so much stuff over there. It's a great place to kind of like get all up in and just kind of spend a little bit of time, maybe when you're sitting on the beach or cuddled up in front of a fire, right? No matter what the weather is. Yes. So Lane, let's take it away. Would you rather be on the beach or curled up in front of a fire, Lisa? Curled up in front of a fire. I was a beach girl back when I was younger, but now I had enough beach time. (laughs) Now that I work outside, beaches don't seem nearly as drawing as they used to. I'll take the fire as well. Me too. I mean, let's, yeah. All right, let's get started. Okay, the first question is going to be, why do my single stem sunflowers have multiple blooms along the stem? And I know, Lisa, we've talked about this before, and you've said there are always some weird ones every year, no matter how experienced you are. And I actually have a picture of this to go along with this question. So What would explain these multiple blooms up and down the stem of a single stem? Well, the question, the answers to this question, um, which is a really common question that we get particularly early in the season. um, And I just, I was sharing with Lane, I just got this this morning, DM to me, um, is the, the answer I've received is that the plants are stressed. It's a reaction to a stress. What is that stress? Well, it could be anything. It could be swings in temperature, pest pressure, water, um, you know, moisture needs, nutrient. It could be any or all of those things. Um, and, you know, because as I, um, I know for me here on the farm, we buy in large packets of sunflower seeds. So sometimes we'll use the same pack of seeds. You know, if we have 10,000 seeds in a huge pack, we're starting from the same pack all summer. And it happens early on, but it does not happen later in the season. So what that says is it's some type of environmental stress. I can't tell you what that stress is, but it's something. And we um, have been through this over and over for several years where it's just a lot of times for us, we're pushing the envelope, getting them in early, and they just don't get their needs met like they want. Yeah, I definitely think it's like you said, it's some sort of stress. When it has happened to me, it seems to be exactly as you described. It's those really early ones that you're trying to push. And like this year, there was a warm spell and then it got really cool again and it stayed cool. And the result was that some of them that got planted in that early round had these little side blooms on them. So can someone still sell a stem that has these on them? Can you describe how you might process that stem if you're experiencing this? Sure. So, you know, for single stem sunflowers, we entirely strip the entire stem. So there would be no evidence that there was other stem, you know, other stems down there. We literally only leave one leaf right up underneath the bud. That's the only foliage that we leave. And in my experience, um, if you, let's just say that your pro cut is 60 inches tall or so, and you only need it 30 inches. So you cut the stem in half when you remove it from the garden. If those buds are on that stem out in the garden, they will go on to grow and perhaps bloom, but they never grow into a sellable quality, sturdy stem. They might be good for a bouquet if they actually get long enough. I haven't ever seen them get that long, but 
um, you know, I, I just let them go is what I'm saying. Yes. yes. And I, as a home gardener, I have sometimes just experimented and let them grow out to see what would happen. The stems for me tend to stay short, like under a foot or less. And the flowers do open, but the flowers are smaller. I will yeah. tell you the bees love them just as much as they love the big flowers. So if you are a home gardener and you just want to let them bloom, it just creates a longer bloom time for you out there. Like I said, the bees love the nectar, even though the sunflowers you're growing, a lot of single stems don't have pollen, but the bees still love the nectar. They look beautiful out there and you could probably use them in a shorter arrangement. But like Lisa said, if you're a farmer, I would not expect those stems to be something you would be able to sell. Yeah. But the main stem, yes, you would just strip off those side blooms and it would be perfectly fine. Yes, for sure. All right. Next question. My sunflowers are blooming on very short stems. Why is this happening and how can I prevent this in the future? You know, one of those stresses, stresses which I didn't mention in our lineup um, with that question previously is how long did they sit in the tray? You know, we yes. as commercial growers typically always... Um, start our sunflowers indoors in plug trays to be planted out when they're two and a half to three weeks old. It is really easy to leave them in the tray longer. Um, and often that is one of the most common um, issues is that they bloom on super short stems. So I just tell people just keep planting every week and you will figure this all out because the next weeks won't do that. Because guess yeah. what? You planted them at the same time and they were only two and a half weeks old instead of, or three weeks old instead of four or five or six weeks old, right? Yes. And sunflowers are really fast growers. Like Lisa mentioned, we recommend you could expect to plant them out about two to three weeks after sowing them. So make sure you know where you're going to put your sunflowers before you start them because it will sneak up on you and you'll leave them either in their trays or even in their soil blocks for too long. And then you run the risk of stunting the plants or really stressing them and having them bloom on much shorter stems. Yes, for sure. Okay, next question. My sunflower blooms are getting damaged by pests. What can I do to prevent this from happening? And this question isn't specific as to a particular type of damage, but what are some of the different things that could be going on? Sure. So there's two different kinds of damage in my experience. There is petal damage, which can mostly be prevented by proper harvest stage. The other is that is the how you'll it starts to open and you see that it's all dirty inside. And that means that there's a larva of something growing inside the center of that bud um, that is actually caught. You, you can't save that sunflower. Um, so let's go with number one first, harvest stage. We harvest particularly during the time that pest damage or pest presence is really strong. Like we're heading right into that. I mean, we have Japanese beetles now. We have, you know, pests are just really revving up their engines now that it's starting to get warm. So we have to really pay close attention and grab the sunflowers out of the garden just as those first petals are lifting off the center disc. And that, because they quickly open indoors, protected in air conditioning, out of the hot sun and out of the presence of those pesky, whether it's cucumber beetles or grasshoppers, um, anybody that eats it or that soils the petals and leaves stains. Um, the larva that gets into our blooms typically are laid there by different moths. Um, and the way that you can prevent that, we, this is how we used to prevent it, but now we have, by restoring the natural order of our farm, we have a worker that actually does this for us. But so if you see those moths flitting around your garden, or if you've ever grown broccoli or cauliflower and you find those little inchworms, people call them, they're just baby moths is what they are, that eat your cabbage and cauliflower. Well, that's a similar happening on many flowers. I know zinnias get them, azuratum, as well as sunflowers. If you have a heavy infestation of those moths, they lay their egg on the bud and that bud, that little bug just burr, that little baby larva burrows into that bud and just kind of, he's eaten what he needs until he hatches out and becomes a moth, right? So the way to prevent that, there is an organic product um, called BT. The brand that we actually use that's the most common is called Dipel. 
and it's powder and you mix it with water and then you spray it on your flowers. Um, it is very specific and doesn't tend to harm other creatures because you have to, in, it's only effective to those people that ingest it. Um, so by spraying your buds, um, it will actually help to prevent that from actually happening. Um, however, um, you know who eats that larva is wasps. Those paper wasps or that similar, there's many different technical or species of wasp, but it's the big wasp that we're also afraid of. Friends, those big wasps eat other bugs. And this is something they are really, really good at. Um, so we actually have wasps that shop our sunflower buds now. <laughs> and we literally have not, this does not happen to us anymore. And we don't have to treat, we haven't treated probably for seven or eight years, actually. So yeah. Yeah. Wasps are amazing. And yes. I just want to reiterate too, once that sunflower, once the petals start lifting, that sunflower opens pretty fast when it's out there in the field and it's warm. How fast, Lisa, would you say it goes from being the right stage to being borderline too late? Yeah, you know, that's so funny because we um we harvest on Mondays and Thursdays normally in the summer. Spring, we may do it a little bit more frequently, but if we, when we look at sunflowers on Monday, we cut them so early because we know how quickly they move. Yeah. And by Thursday, when we get back, it's like, shoot, this one's already almost over the hill. So yes, yes they move really fast. And, you know, especially when the, it's those hot afternoons yeah. that just really, really push them. So that's what allows us because yes, you could definitely cut sunflowers every day, but that's not very efficient. That's not a very good use of time as commercial growers. You know, you're better to really figure out how hard you can cut them, meaning how early in the stage and still have them open completely. And then when you come back on Thursday to have everybody be in good shape that was left out in the garden. Yeah. And then also remember to prioritize harvesting the lighter colors because those actually show much more damage than the darker colors. Yes. Um, so we actually stop starting the white light and white night, like I won't be starting them again until later in the summer for fall because our pest damage is just so very, very strong, um, okay. particularly this year. It looks like it's going to be a whopper. <laughs> okay, moving on. My sunflower stems are too thick and the heads are too large to be useful in bouquets. Is there anything I can do to reduce the flower size in future plantings? And there definitely is something you can do for your single stems, right, Lisa? Yep. And I, I think that I, most people are as surprised as I was when I learned this. <laughs> With single stem sunflowers, you totally control the size of the bloom by the spacing that you plant them out in the garden. Now, if you planted one pro cut sunflower all by itself with no competition around. It's not going to get as big as a Russian sun, mammoth sunflower, but it's going to get big. Um, but if you plant that very same pro cut sunflower four to six inches from its all of its neighbors in your garden, it's going to create the perfect three to four inch. The longer, the longer the day length as we move into the long days of summer, the bigger blooms naturally get. So sometimes for these days that are really, really long, I in fact plant two sunflowers in the same cell, two seeds in the same cell, and then plant that cell as if it's one, not thinning it, to even get them closer together to keep my sunflowers that small three to four inch bloom. So you 100% control the stem and the flower size by the spacing. Yeah. And that's something you can experiment too, to see how closely you can get them and get the loom size that you want or not have any negative effects like disease pressure from a lack of air right. circulation. But in my experience, they do extremely well packed tightly. I do mine at four inches apart in a row with the rows only six inches apart. And that works really well in my garden. Yeah. And how do you space yours again, Lisa? I do five rows in a 30 inch wide bed, evenly spaced out, and then six inches in the row. 
Okay, a lot of my sunflowers seem to have soft necks. Which sunflowers have the softest necks and which have the stiffest? And is there anything I can do to remedy this? So which varieties or colors seem to have the softest necks in your experience, Lisa? I have no idea what the genetics are of what causes this, but any of, in my experience, any of the specialty colors, chocolates, bicolors, the white ones, all of them tend to have softer necks than the old standards, the oranges, you know, the orange with the brown center, which was like the beginning sunflower, I would guess. Um, yeah. And so, yes, so there it's more, I mean, in the Pro Cut series is a perfect example. I think there's 14 colors. All of those that are special, which are, I think there's three by colors, the two whites um, and the chocolate, or they, they call it red, actually. We refer to it as the chocolate. All six of those have soft necks. The other pro cuts, all their brothers and sisters seem to have perfectly stiff necks. That was one of the most common questions I got about the peach. When peach pro cut sunflowers came out, was it last year or the year before? I think um, it was last year is when we introduced it at least. Um, well, all of my peers, sour, sun, um, flower farming friends were like, all right, give us the lowdown. Is the neck stiff? The neck on that peach is as stiff as the oranges. <laughs> so yeah. it's that it's something about those specialty colors that have soft necks. Um, and yes, there is a way to help remedy this. Um, so I have learned from an old flower arranger. I was an arranger for 50 years, shared the tip with me that when she, she doesn't harvest flowers, but she has to hydrate a lot of very limp flowers because so much of her stuff was shipped in, right? She actually puts what she called a splash of hydrator, which is quick dip is the one that we use and offer. And I took a splash to mean like two tablespoons to a gallon. That's what I did. And so now I actually put quick dip, which is actually used as a reviver in wilted flowers. I actually put those two tablespoons into the gallon of water for the harvest bucket. And when I'm harvesting those known to be soft neck sunflowers or any flower that's challenged that way, I put hydrator in the bucket and it kind of prevents it. And I actually did it this morning on Rubecchias, which I cut hours later than I normally do, but I needed them. And they instantly kind of, I mean, just wilted down before I even got them in the building and they're all standing straight and strong now. All right. So it definitely is something that might depend on the color or variety you're growing. And then what Lisa does is two tablespoons of quick dip in a gallon of water into her harvest bucket. And that hopefully will help sturdy up those yeah. necks. Next question. Why do my sunflowers seem to have a short base life? Which varieties tend to have the longest base life and which have the shortest? So short base life, a um, couple of different things. A variety selection definitely is this one. Um, so you want to grow pollenless sunflowers. And I mean, people instantly go, why? <laughs> but pollen, that whole cycle of creating pollen lessens the vase life of flowers. So there are pollenless sunflowers, but they, as Lane mentioned, definitely still produce tons of nectar. Our sunflowers are covered in bees when we let them open yes. up out in the yes. garden. Um, so that is one step is the first step is which varieties are you growing? If you grow, like for instance, we sell a cover crop of all sunflowers. It's a, it's a sunflower that's made for that. They are not very good cut flowers. You know, they're not pollenless. They just age really, really fast is what that boils down to. So you want to select varieties that are known cut flowers. And so uh, back on to those color varieties, um, many of the bicolors as well as the reds and chocolates prematurely drop their petals. Um, and that's just, again, part of you know, it's that price of having something special. I don't have, I don't really have a remedy for that. I will say that when um, I was growing uh, in the fall, when we're growing a lot of those reds, which look chocolate, we definitely cut them before that first, as just as that first petal is lifting off the face. And they're really quick to get away from you because they're dark and you don't notice them lifting. Um, and so getting them harvested as early as possible 
um, getting them into hydrator, getting them inside and keeping them the base um, with fresh cut flower food helps to prolong them. Yeah. So it may just be a function of the variety and then just always make sure you're harvesting as early as possible to give them the longest possible base life. Yes. And in case anyone's interested, we actually did an entire episode on bicolor sunflowers and we talked a bit about why they tend to drop their petals earlier, as well as one bicolor cultivar that seems to hold on to its petals a bit longer. And that was episode number 10, if you want to check that out. Okay, moving on to the last question, and this is kind of a sad question. A deer or rabbit nipped off the tops of my single stem sunflower seedlings or plants. Will they go on to bloom or should I rip them out and plant new ones in that space? I think that totally depends on if you are a farmer or a home gardener. Yes. So if you're a farmer, yep, you first off need to provide for some kind of protection, you know, and replant because they may or may not bloom and you just don't want to wait and see. I mean, and if they do bloom, they aren't suitable for sale for cut flowers. Kind of the same as those extra buds along that single stem yeah. you said grew out and didn't get very long. It's that same kind of situation I've had, you know, cause we've had things happen or we've harvested even and left the stumps out in the garden. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh gosh, we totally forgot. Look, they've got little short stems with blooms. They are just so insignificant. But as you mentioned, if you're a home gardener, you may be okay with that. But as yeah. a farmer, you need to replace that crop immediately. Yes. And I have found that when this happens, the results are kind of inconsistent. I've had some times where they get nipped and it just sits there, like nothing happens. And yep. then I've had other times where like Lisa just described, the plants will develop some shorter stemmed, smaller flowered side blooms. I'm not sure what it's related to. It could be related to when it was actually quote unquote right. pinched by the creature or maybe the variety. Yeah. But I've heard it described a lot of times that these single stem sunflowers, they just don't respond very well to pinching. That's just not in their genetic makeup to want to branch. So definitely, like Lisa said, if you're counting on getting flowers out of that, unfortunately, you will need to replant. Yes. <laughs> but again, if you're a home gardener and you want to wait and see what happens, just know that you may or may not get blooms. And if you do, they're probably going to be much smaller and have much shorter stems. Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully that answered a lot of your sunflower troubleshooting questions. And thank you so much for joining us, everyone. We really appreciate you being here listening or watching every week. And friends, if you are enjoying this podcast, we would love for you to subscribe. And even better yet, which helps us the very most, is to drop a review. That helps the podcast apps show our podcast to other people. And that's how you can really help us is to drop a comment if you're watching us on YouTube and subscribe over there. If you're listening on your podcast app, follow this show post a review and those things. I know they seem so insignificant, but that's the only way that the apps know which podcast do should people be shown. And that would really, really help us. So friends, remember to drop in over at the gardeners workshop dot com and learn more about what we're doing. And thanks Lane for such great questions. And until we see you again, friends, ciao. Bye.